Hello, my name is Mary Eddie Yu, and this is my colleague, Jeremy Phillips. Hello. And we are coming to you from Macau Institute for Tourism Studies. And today we're going to be introducing to you uh, some findings from our research entitled Guiding Beginning Academic Writers Toward Effectively Integrating Source Texts in Essays. And we're sorry we can't be with you in Seoul. So our research is based on this question, what is the best way to learn second language skills? Is it a step-by-step -step approach, similar to this uh, ladder we see here in the corner? Or would an integrated approach with different skills be better, focusing on the different target genres? So this is the question that we are going to be exploring in today's presentation. Today's presentation is divided into six parts. Um, my colleague Jeremy will introduce the problem statement and literature review, and then I'll take over to discuss our research questions, research methodology, results and discussion, and some conclusions and recommendations. So over to you, Jeremy. Thank you, Mary. So academic English is a worldwide phenomenon. More and more people are being required to study in English, to write in English, to publish in English, to do research in English, to go to school in English. So EAP is becoming a more and more necessary skill around the world. Uh, a lot of English medium uh, of instruction, higher education institutions are emerging and more and more English medium programs are being taught. Due to the students' needs in English medium higher education, EAP is now being required at lower and lower English proficiency levels. Uh, in the old days, uh, people would be required to have a certain level of general English before they would begin an academic English program. But that is no longer practical in this world where students are testing into institutions, including our own, uh, at lower and lower levels of English proficiency, but being required to study academic English. Uh, they don't have the ability to develop their grammar, their vocabulary, and their four skills before they start down the academic path. Uh, and in the uh, outer circle countries, students who are entering university often need EAP right away, despite having low English proficiency levels. So this is a problem we're confronted with. And then the two key skills that we're looking at are critical reading skills and effective academic writing. Our research explores the effectiveness of integrating source readings and writing tasks uh, to develop students' academic writing skills. Uh, and our teaching intervention was actually relatively simple. We wanted to provide students with multiple vetted level specific texts to read before they sit down and do the writing task. So we give them some reading to help them with the writing. Uh, there's a sample available on the Edzilla page and on the Padlet connected to this presentation to make that a little more clear. Uh, before we started our research, however, we sought to inform ourselves about uh, what's going on in the research literature. And we looked mostly at articles from the last 10 years or so researching in an Asian context, similar to the one we have here in the south of China. Um, so the first problem that we came up against is the one we've already talked about, the idea of the proportional syllabus or building block approach uh, versus a deep end EAP approach. Basically, proportional syllabus is not sustainable any longer, and contemporary EAP is focused on where the students need to be more than where they are now. Uh, this quote from Alan Alexander kind of nicely sums up the situation and the sort of change of mindset uh, that is required. So the idea is that language level is actually less important than the student's commitment to get expertise in their subject discipline. And a teaching approach that is enabling rather than exclusive is probably more beneficial. It's high stakes for the student and time is limited. We need to be uh, target situation driven rather than deterred by the student's current level. Uh, learning academic English and argumentative writing without incorporating sources is a common approach, and this is what's often happening in IELTS and similar class, uh, exams such as the HKDCSE. But it's not always practical, partly because reading for writing is a, a key part of assignments at any tertiary institution, and partly because when learners learn to write argumentatively without sources, and they then hit up against source-based writing, they have to kind of start again. And even ones who've attained high levels of proficiency kind of hit against a barrier and that happens and this is problematic. 
Similarly, writing from sources is seen as a transformative process, according to Rosemary Wette. So the first it's reading comprehension and then information selection, and then integrating the information into the current world knowledge, and then sitting down to write a text in a foreign language. Research evidence shows that this is actually a regular arc, a trajectory that is predictable. And in some cases it's teachable because we can give them practice with this as they go along the arc. Uh, similarly, students have already committed to a kind of narrow gauge uh, academic path, so they have some knowledge from their content areas that we can capitalize on as EAP teachers. Uh, naturally, we think integrating reading and writing is beneficial, or we wouldn't have done it, uh, but other people think so too, and so studies from Abrams and Cho and Buck Griffler show that this is a good way to kind of get double value and to increase the learner's writing proficiency. Uh, Plankins and Gabriel provide a little more detail here in that they say that lower proficiency learners tend to rely more on the reading stuff you give them and for language. Middle proficiency learners use the reading less for language, but they also make less advantage of the ideas. Uh, and then high proficiency learning are able, learners are able to adapt the ideas from the sources without recycling so much of the language. So that's a kind of key point for us. And similarly, we feel that integrating reading and writing makes the reading purposeful. The reading is there to support a writing task. Um, one problem that's fairly common in the literature is, is patch writing. Uh, people have been studying this since the 90s. Uh, lower proficiency learners tend to borrow language from the input reading without citation, without acknowledgement, mixing it up with their own writing in a very kind of problematic way. Uh, Pecorari characterizes pack, patch writing as accidental. It's not sort of transgressive and claims that it's, it's also uh, teachable. We can teach through patch writing. And a number of other studies have found that patch writing tends to be a chrysalis stage for beginner writers, uh, particularly Du and Lu, who focused on paraphrasing skills. Uh, students would use the citations as decorative features because they thought that's what the teacher wanted. They couldn't paraphrase, they couldn't cite, they couldn't support their arguments, they just produced something that looked like academic writing. But this is a beginning stage of academic writing that can be uh, developed beyond. So, uh, as I say, we vetted our text to make them level specific uh, using the English grammar profile blur to make it kind of simpler, uh, simplified in a principled way. The students can read their text rather than uh, come up against a text that, that, that uh, they can't read and thus can't use for writing. Uh, we also selected for relevance. This is consistent with Chong et al. So we need to kind of seed in the ideas that we want them to use for their writing in the reading. But we also supply a multiplicity of ideas so that we, they can support multiple arguments from the short vetted readings. So having simplified the text, having selected the text, uh, we also integrated them into a writing task that was specific to those texts. And this is consistent again with Rosemary Wett and uh, John Bichner's approach to teaching argumentative writing in academic genres by a sort of scaffolded approach. So uh, our research questions were relatively simple and our intervention is relatively understandable. I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Mary, who's gonna to explain to you what we did and what we found. Thank you, Jeremy. So as you can see here, our research questions for the study, there were two main ones. How does the integrated reading and writing task format affect the writing of beginning academic writers? And secondly, what areas of academic reading and writing in need of further development are most apparent? So as Jeremy mentioned before, um, before, our, uh, before collecting data, we had a teaching intervention where English, English lecturers at our institute, a tourism-focused institute in Macau, um, were all using the same materials with uh, multiple short vetted readings about a topic which were connected with a specific writing task. So after uh, teaching using these materials, um, we uh, approached the English lecturers and their participation in our research was voluntary. Uh, no incentive was given, but the participants were told that their perspectives would be considered when adjusting the course and course materials for the following year. So we gave the lecturers the option of either engaging in qualitative interviews or providing written responses to the open interview questions. Uh, we created 12 open-ended questions about their perceptions using the materials this term, 
and the questions covered source use, writing fluency, citations, text planning, and classroom approaches to integrated sources in teaching writing. After the interviews had been finished, they were transcribed and the transcripts and the written responses were uh, coded and treated in the same way for the coding process. So open coding and then later axial coding were conducted separately by both myself and Jeremy without reference to each other's codes or any theoretical preset codes. And then the separate sets of coding were compared and differences were resolved through discussion. So overall, um, as may be somewhat expected, uh, teachers perceived that the effect of the reading input appeared to be closely related to the students' general English proficiency levels. Um, you can see this quote here from interviewee three, for high English proficiency students, the input readings are helpful. However, weak students just take a look and then copy them without much consideration. So this confirms Cho and Rutgerfler's finding that the stronger students with better general English proficiency tended to produce better writing with source texts. On the right hand side here, you can see that uh, based on our research findings, we kind of divided the effects um, of different aspects on the students writing. Um, at the base, we can see are the effects of their general English proficiency. This includes vocabulary, grammar, reading comprehension skills. Um, above that, there were some effects of EAP skills that need developing, which um, might be seen in any sort of EAP teaching task. And finally, there were some effects specifically of the integrated reading and writing task. So we're going to start at the top of that triangle and find out what effects there were. So um, to answer our first research question, how does the integrated reading and writing task format affect the writing of beginning academic writers. So there were generally three benefits and three drawbacks that were identified by the teachers. Um, the benefits are listed here, um, content and ideas about the topic. All six of our interviewees mentioned that. Uh, increased lexical complexity, um, half of the interviewees mentioned that. And finally, um, improved structure of the essays was also mentioned. So as you can see, um, here are some quotes on the right-hand side that point out exactly what these benefits are. So for example, um, regarding content, interviewee five says with inserted sources, the student's writing was more convincing, more mature, more substantial. Um, regarding lexical complexity, here interviewee four pointed out that for those who could understand the reading to some extent, they could then recycle some of the language in their own writing. And finally, um, regarding the structure of essays, particularly for students with weaker proficiency, um, interviewee one pointed out that some of the students can actually use the paragraph structure from the readings as an example for them in their own writing. So um, regarding the previous research on this, um, Chong et al. did find that using vetted source texts helped reduce the cognitive load and provide content, which is in line with our finding that the readings provided content and ideas. Um, however, other researchers, Abrams and Cho and Brooke Griffler, did argue that the input readings led to better quality written texts, but they didn't clarify how. Um, so our finding helps to clarify that pointing out it also assists with lexical complexity and even structure. Regarding the three main drawbacks teachers identified of the integrated task format, um, the main one that came up was patch writing, um, which was mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation. Um, for example, sometimes students were just borrowing sentence after sentence from the text. Uh, also, uh, some teachers identified that having the, the reading texts restricted students' writing um, and made it somewhat difficult for them because they needed to find citations that matched the ideas they wanted to talk about. And finally, um, some teachers did mention that because there were more steps to the integrated reading, extraction, integration, writing process, there were also more chance for students to lose marks, which is not so good for the students. Now, regarding the patch writing, um, our findings clarified that uh, uh, there are different reasons that the students were producing this kind of patch writing, and it seemed to be a cross continuum. 
Um, for some students, it was an issue of whether they know why sources are used in academia. Um, and on the other angle, it was whether they actually understand the technicalities of citation format. So as you can see here, there are students who may know why they needed to use citations, but didn't have the technical know-how of how to make that look in their writing. Where on the other side, there may be students who um, they can memorize that citation format and use it correctly in their text, but they don't understand why they need to use citations, which results in a text which has a mismatch between content from citations and the student's own content. So here are a couple sample quotes um, that kind of exemplify this, these issues of the how and why in patch writing. So the first person, uh, first interview we mentioned, they actually don't get it to use the quote to support the ideas. They feel like I need to quote because I'm required to quote. Um, interviewee three similarly felt that they, they really would hope that the students could understand and use uh, information from the text to make their own article more interesting and convincing, and not just putting a quote in there because they have to show that they know how to use APA format. Uh, and regarding the format, um, interviewee two also mentioned that she'd seen some that they're not really quoting correctly, and she couldn't tell if they were trying to paraphrase or direct quote, but it wasn't correct because the students actually hadn't mastered that format of uh, using citations. So in our study, we found that patch writing was apparent across all levels of general English proficiency. So this was somewhat different from Plakin's and Jebrel's um, analysis, where they felt that uh, different types of patch writing occurred depending on English proficiency. Um, we found that aside from English proficiency, uh, the patch writing errors also depended on whether students understood the purpose of citing sources and also the technicalities of citation format. Um, and this supports Du and Leo's finding that um, Asian students may insert citations as a decorative feature, perhaps believing it's required by the teacher, but not really understanding the purpose of writing bases on source, based on sources. Moving on to our second research question, um, we looked also at more general areas of academic reading and writing, needing more uh, development in the students. And we can find uh, five here, ranging from needing more writing practice to specific uh, types of training that are needed. So I'll introduce those in more detail. So uh, generally, uh, the teachers felt that in the classroom context, there was limited practice limited feedback and a limited number of samples. And having more of all of these practice, feedback and samples would help students to be better able to understand and produce this kind of integrated reading and writing text type. Um, so interviewees felt they needed more time to explain the samples and expose them to more samples so students could understand why they should use source readings. And um, as interviewee two pointed out, it seems like from previous practices, they didn't really quite get what they were supposed to do. Um, so this is in line with what WET 2017 found, also recommending um, extensive practice to achieve uh, writing with sources skills. Regarding more specific EAP skills in need of training, um, cohesion was a main one. As we can find in this quote here, it sometimes felt that the citation was just thrown in there, an individual sentence without connections to the previous or the next sentence, um, which required the teacher to think, okay, I understand what you're trying to do, but it actually doesn't make sense. Um, secondly, there was the issue of general academic writing structures. So paragraph structures, thesis statements, topic sentences. And some of the teachers found, um, particularly with students of lower English proficiency, that even with several weeks of practice, many of the students had not grasped this basic paragraph structure of academic writing. So in conclusion, um, our study examined the benefits and drawbacks of using vetted source texts, um, vetted at um, particular English levels to support student essay writing um, and this was according to the teacher's perceptions. 
Um, overall, we found that the reading and writing format did improve the content and depths of ideas in students' writings, and it was successful in introducing students to the practice of writing from sources in academia. Um, but there were problems evident with understanding why source use is needed, um, details of citation format, cohesion, uh, connecting source uh, information, source text with the writer's own language and voice, and finally, the, uh, general academic writing structures. Uh, so here are a few recommendations provided regarding teaching academic writing. Uh, first of all, we suggest vetting the texts for English proficiency and content does help with the process of acquiring this reading to academic writing uh, skill. Um, but the text need, texts need to be vetted considering the English proficiency of the students. Uh, secondly, we do suggest providing multiple short texts with multiple perspectives on the topic. So students do not feel that they are forced to write in a way that will agree with what the teacher thinks um, to get marks. We want to encourage students critical thinking to look from different perspectives and include those in their writing. Uh, thirdly, as mentioned above, uh, to help students avoid patch writing. Uh, it's important to make sure they understand why sources and citations are used in academic work. And finally, it seems that repeated short practices with this may be more effective for skill building than having fewer long practices. There were a few, lim few limitations and some suggestions we have for further research on this topic. Firstly, the number of interviews we acknowledge was a small number because of the limited number of teachers teaching the subject. So it is possible that some perspectives on the topic may not have been identified. Uh, secondly, we did only examine the teacher's perceptions, and it's important to consider the students' perceptions as well. And finally, uh, future research should include detailed analysis of the student texts also to see the extent um, to which these identified issues arise and in what ways. So our references are provided here. Um, if you are interested, you're welcome to follow up with them. And finally, if you have any questions or comments, please do contact either myself or Jeremy and our email addresses are provided for you here. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to check out the Edzilla for this presentation for the sample materials. Thank you.